let's bring textures into Unity. The first thing we're going to need to do is find some texture images. Uh, we're going to do that with a website called Polyhaven or whatever, textures.com, a whole bunch. I have a website that links different assets together. Um, I like Polyhaven. Um, they haven't been doing textures for that long, but they're uh, pretty good. Uh, Stonewall, that looks fine. Okay, so we found some texture that we want. We found the perfect texture after hours of research and lots of procrastination, and we got exactly what we want, uh, did, did this one. Um, now time to download it. Now we can just hit download, but uh, let's pay attention a little bit to some of the settings here. Um, do we want the blend file, the 3D modeling software Blender? Do we want the GLTF 3D model software? Um, Unity doesn't support GLTFs out of the box, but I think someone's at there maybe adding that feature, I don't remember. Um, uh, and then most importantly, the resolution. Uh, we don't, like you might think just like, oh, higher resolution, let's use the highest resolution possible. Um, but we generally don't wanna do that for reasons. As a rule of thumb, uh, we want to. We generally would want to use the highest resolution that um, we can give Unity, and Unity will compress it into smaller resolutions on its own, and that's why we just give it the high resolution ones and let Unity deal with that problem. But if we know that Unity is going to compress it into a smaller resolution anyway, then like, hey, let's not bother wasting our file space in our computer. Um, so we have a little zip file. If you can't see that your file extensions. Um, I highly recommend in going and adding a file name extensions in Windows. Uh, Windows 10, the Explorer looks a little bit different. This is Windows 11, but it's in some view menu somewhere. Um, and being able to just, as you work and move files around and copy files around, um, it just makes life a little bit easier just to know what you're doing. Like we, we actually care about extensions all the time. Um, so having that information available to us is very helpful. Um, let's extract this file. I can just right click and extract it. Uh, the reason we have to extract it is I can't drag my textures out of, you know, out of a zip file, right? Uh, they have to get decompressed by the operating system. And then once I'm there, I can bring them out. Okay, so we got the stone wall. Let's make a folder for them to go. Um, keeping your textures all together or materials all together or however you like to organize things. Um, generally, if I would, I'd be adding and deleting uh, textures like as one element. So I like to keep them all together. So I like to keep the, uh, the material that I also need with the same location where I keep the image files and then all that in a folder. But in larger projects, you might have uh, a series of materials that are all variations and that maybe they're using different uh, uh, images in different ways. Um, and it can be, you know, just use the right file organization for the job. Uh, so we need to make a material. Um, and this is, we're gonna call this what, stone wall. Uh, and we'll put this on our cube. And the default material looks a lot like the default material, uh, so it didn't change, but we did in fact add it to the cube. So we have these little squares right to the side of the, uh, uh, right to the left of the labels. And those are little drop targets that we can drag our uh, textures into, like that, um, like that white. Um, so we need to figure out which of these squares should be what uh, should be what material, because that doesn't look very good. <laughs> um, so uh, how do we figure that out? Well, the hint is usually in the file name. Uh, this one is called a uh, stonewall02 underscore diff. That diff is short for diffusion which is, or diffuse, as in diffuse lighting conditions, um, as in neutral lighting, where it's the color of the object that un, not under a, you know, any particularly, like not under a green light or a sunset light, like just neutrally, um, before we consider lighting, what does it look like? What is the color of the surface, right? Unity uses a different term for that, it uses albedo to describe that. Um, and some other software might just say color. Um, although color is perceived. So I prefer to referring to it as diffuse or albedo. Um, and there we go. Now we got our color data, but it's not very, you know, not a lot working on. Let's see what else we have here. This is displacement. Displacement is also the same as sort of a height map. It's sort of a, a distance away from the stone wall. Um, unfortunately, if we bring that into Unity, uh, Unity doesn't really, you know, mm, yeah, a little bit. It's all right. 
Um, next is the most important one, and that is going to be our normal. Uh, sometimes you'll have the option between uh, DX or GL or DirectX or OpenGL. Uh, Unity's default 3D render is using OpenGL. Um, and here I have the GL one, and that's fine. We can convert these things and deal with whatever we got. That's out of the scope of this video. Um, if I were to drag this onto my this nor onto my normal slot, uh, ooh, looks a lot better. But it also says this texture is not marked as a normal map. Fix now. Um, what did that just fix? Well, if we look at the texture, uh, when we imported it in its import settings, when you select an object, uh, it's telling me the texture type. It needs to know that this is a normal map and not a color data. Um, it's actually storing XYZ direction vector data in an image file, um, and it needs to know that it's storing the data differently so it can treat these RGB channels as actually as like XYZ rotations uh, uh, differently. Um, uh, and that's why it's blue, because Z is up in normal map. So Z is like flat. So blue is like flat. Um, uh, yeah, but, but Unity needs to know that it's a normal map. Um, so what that fix now pop-up did is it changed that import setting for me. So great. Um, so now we can see what this normal map is doing. It's making uh, it's making it look a lot more three D, a lot more depthy, right? Doing a lot better than our height map is doing it. But with their powers combined, height map's like much lower res here. With their powers combined, you know, nice. Oh, these are one. Lastly, we have a roughness map. Roughness is how shiny the object is. And we have a thing for that. We have metallic. Um, so let's put our roughness in our metallic and see if that helps. Well, kind of the exact opposite of what I wanted. Um, it's doing it, doing it the opposite way. So one thing I could do is I could probably invert this or I could uh, uh, change the way my texture is working uh, to get it to convert from one to another um, with just like plain old image editing. Or I could use more sophisticated software, like bringing all my image textures into, you know, Blender or something, and then exporting new image textures. Or um, there's some other pieces of uh, tools that are that are useful for doing that. Um, for what it's worth, Unity can convert a height map into a um, um, into a normal map. Uh, look at that. Not very different from the. So there we go. That's what. Uh, now I have a you know a much better looking texture. Not great but much better looking. Um, some things to note, some file formats are out of the box, gonna work better than others. Um, this is another image format, um, ARM. Uh, it is, what is it, ambient, roughness, and metallic in the red, green, and blue channels. Um, so we, we sometimes pull that into Photoshop and then uh, just look at the red channel and export that. Just look at the blue, export that. Or we can have uh, different Unity importers that can deal with different image file types and stuff. Um, we're not getting into how to, imp how to uh, uh, you know, we're, if you get your your uh, textures from from uh, someone that's targeting Unity and not targeting Blender or wherever, then they're going to be the right textures, and we'll go from there. Um, uh, in the future, we can learn how to sort of convert them between different file types. Like the difference between an OpenGL normal map and a DirectX normal map is just like flipping some color channels around or flipping some directions around. It's like pretty trivial to do. Um, so that's what we got. That's bringing textures into something. The last thing to cover is our tiling. And tiling is going to control, uh, it's sort of an adding a multiplier onto our UV maps. And once we learn what UV maps are, that'll make a lot more sense. Uh, but here, it just shows us sort of how repeating the X and Y axis, or the U and V axes, oh -ho, of our maps are. Um, and we can sort of, you know, if we scale this object like incorrectly this way, then maybe we give it a custom material, like we duplicate it and give it a stretched out material and we, um, where is that? And then we tile it like the opposite uh, we tell it like the opposite way to sort of compensate. And is that the, the best way to do that? Like the scaling is five and then the stone wall would be five. And now we're like back to normal. Is that the best way to do things? No, no. But with the current set of tools we have available to us, that is one way to do things. And 
um, by duplicating the material, you know, we only have one set of image uh, textures, but we have multiple materials that are using the image textures with different tiling settings or different shininess settings. And we can, you know, we can use that, um, those kinds of tricks, right? We're not stuck with just one material to apply to everything. Don't be afraid of like that you've done something wrong if you have textures that were just like, Unity just doesn't support these texture types out of the box. That's, you know, it's fine. Um, we can work with what we got and we'll make it work. So, great.